Uh, hi guys, uh, this is Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland uh, and in this short video, uh, another video in our series of videos dealing with the, uh, the theory of interest uh, and what we're going to do in this particular video is concentrate on a derivation uh, of the internal rate of return formula uh, for a particular for a particular project. Uh, that particular formula, uh, basically, what it does is it, 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 within the formula we're going to we have we have two, uh, let's say, net present values that we've calculated for the actual project itself uh, at particular interest rates, and what we want to try to find is the interest rate that would what, that would I suppose result in a total net present value of equal of zero the actual formula itself uh, looks like this the formula okay uh, is that the IRR the internal rate of return for a project uh, is equal to don't forget we've calculated two net present values at two different interest rates so it's the net present value the first net present value that we achieved uh, times the second interest rate uh, minus the second net present value that was achieved uh, times the first interest rate. So don't forget we ran a particular net present value calculation on a project uh, uh, at a particular interest rate I1 and we achieved a net present value of N1. Uh, then we ran it again uh, at a second interest rate I2 and we achieved a second net present value of N2. So we ran two, two net present value calculations uh, on, on the same project at two different interest rates. And the internal rate of return is the relationship between between these two things, uh, I suppose, uh, relative to uh, the first net present value minus uh, the second net present value. Okay. Uh, so we need to try to derive this particular formula. Okay? So let's actually just do a graph, and we're going to assume we're, we're, we're as part of this derivation. Yeah, uh, we're going to assume uh, linearity. Linearity. Now the relationship between between the between the the, the net present values and the interest rates uh, ain't necessarily linear. Okay, but we'll we'll achieve linearity by reducing the difference. Yeah, between between our 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 two our two net present values. Okay, and I'll show you how we're going to do that now in a moment. So we're assuming linearity. So let's just uh, do a graph of this relationship. What we're looking at. So let's say what we have is we have let's say an x-axis here. Uh, this x-axis re axis represents possible interest rates, okay, that we can choose for a particular project. And with every particular interest rate that we choose, every interest rate that we choose, uh, we get an associated net present value for the particular for the particular project. So what we now have along here is we have some net present value, okay. And what we're interested in is we're interested in the interest rate, okay, that will result in a net present value of zero. So let's say for argument's sake that we ran the project, let's say this is one, two, three, four, five, let's say they're interest rates, okay, and let's say this is 100, 200, 300 euros, 300,000 euros, 200,000 euros, it doesn't really make any difference. Uh, this is minus 100, meaning that there was a loss, Okay, uh, minus two hundred. Uh, we, you know, uh, there's a there's a there's there's a deficit. And let's say that we ran the project at two percent. Okay, uh, an interest rate of two percent, and we achieved a a a surplus of two hundred thousand. Yeah, okay, in relation to the project being run at two at two percent. And let's say we ran it at four percent, and we achieved the interest rate increased. So actually, we we what we achieved was we achieved a loss. So now we have two points in space. We have for the force interest rate I1, we have an N1, a net present value. Okay? So we have that point. At this particular interest rate here, we end up with a net present value across here. And this is the point in space I1, N1. And then at the second interest rate, okay, I2, okay, uh, we achieve a second net present value. We'll call that N2. So we're generalizing. Yeah? In this example here, uh, when we ran it at 4%, we achieved a loss of uh, minus 100 or minus 100,000, whatever that particular uh, unit might be. But effectively, we have these two points in space. Okay, we have this point in space here, and we have this point in space here. Okay, uh, And what we can actually do is we can actually draw a line through these, this straight line uh, approach. This is now where we're assuming linearity. Okay. This relationship ain't necessarily as these interest rates increase. This is more curved. It's more there's more curvature in relation to in relation to how these net present values uh, let's say change. But we're assuming linearity. Actually, really the goal is to choose two interest rates that border 
this particular line, okay, uh, so that we make them not infinitesimally small, but very, very small. That effectively, it's the best. The, the effectively, all we have is a straight line between them. Okay, but for our purposes, this is what we have. So imagine now, if we knew the equation of this line, okay. So if we knew the equation, the equation of this line, of the relationship between this point and this point here, or all the points here uh, on that particular line, uh, we could we could solve it for when when 